Okay, so we are going to start microbiology. So we did a little, you did a little bit of it yesterday with the classification. So I haven't checked through um, what you've put up. I'm going to put this up now. So these were just the answers to the questions. I will just like go through yours, but you just need to make sure you've marked them for yourselves. So the 2014 question was the first time that um, she had really looked at that the content that we did on or that you did on Tuesday that was the very first time she'd ever put anything like that in or had ever come up in a paper so it was comparison of animals with plants or fungi with plants um, so while it, that was the first time it was ever directly examinable Now, we obviously haven't done fungi or even amoeba to have maybe some of the finer detail points, but you sh should have been able to do enough to be able to answer the questions. You made it, Cam. So folks, can I ask you to turn your cameras on for me, please? Because that's what Mr. Thompson has asked for. You can shove them towards your ceiling if you so wish. Doesn't bother me in the least bit. Emily, there's no name on yours. So that's why I didn't know who the hell you were. And there's one other person that has no name. Your head is next to Miles. So I'm waiting for my two Sophies and one other. Thank you. So still, we're still missing the person that doesn't have their name. Whoever that is. Okay, so are we happy for me to flick? Take the silence as a yes. So I quite like this. Okay, so you are never alone because of all the little microorganisms that live inside and on you. So Today we're going to talk about bacterial structure and these three, th four things, a capsule, a flagella, a mesosome and a plasmid, they all have something in common. So hopefully we'll figure this out. So microorganisms, can we name anyone? Yes or no? Come on, lads. Bacteria? Bacteria, well done. Other ones? The level of enthusiasm, folks. Okay, so yeah, bacteria, fungi, plankton, slime molds, amoeba, paramecium. There's loads of weird and wonderful ones. And if you study microbiology in university, what does that make you? A small biologist. <laughs> Only if you're my height. But no, it makes you a microbiologist. So microbiology departments are huge because they have medical connotations. They have food connotations. It's microbiology is big business. So if you get that um, as a choice, take it because there's good money in it. So bacteria, pro or you carry out? What do we think? Pro. Yeah, so for insert your notes now, Monera, the family include all of your known bacteria. They are the only prokaryotes on your course, which is good to know. And can we remind us what is what are prokaryotes? What's their definition? They have no nucleus bound organelles or a nucleus. Yeah, so no membrane bound organelles. 
and they have no nucleus so you have a little gap for that no membrane bound nucleus no membrane bound organelles now i'm going to change my share i'm going to play a little tim and moby and give you an introduction to you share okay so here we go dear tim and moby what is bacteria from sarah some types of bacteria are harmful to humans like the ones that cause strep throat or food poisoning but most bacteria are harmless and some are even beneficial bacteria live in our food our water our air and even on and inside our bodies and most of the time we all get along just fine Bacteria are prokaryotic cells, meaning that their nuclear material is not surrounded by a membrane. Bacteria are divided into two major groups, eubacteria and archibacteria. Eubacteria is the largest of all bacteria phyla. You find these guys everywhere. Cyanobacteria are eubacteria that contain chlorophyll, so they can make their own food through photosynthesis. You can find cyanobacteria living together in colonies on water. Most eubacteria that do not use photosynthesis to make their own food live by breaking down dead organisms for energy or feeding off of living organisms. Archibacteria are mostly anaerobic bacteria that live in extreme conditions like hot springs, salt lakes, and deep ocean vents with no sunlight. Archibacteria have been around for millions of years, so scientists think these extreme conditions may be what early Earth was like at one time. Bacteria are everywhere, and since they're so small, lots of them fit into a small space. A single bucket of dirt can contain billions of bacteria. Well, they reproduce. Bacteria make more bacteria using a type of asexual reproduction called fission. Fission produces two cells with the same genetic material as the parent cell. Some bacteria exchange genetic material in a process that's closer to sexual reproduction. Two bacteria can exchange genetic material through a thin tube. Unlike fission, the resulting cells have different genetic material than the parent cells. Hey, what you doing? You're trying to train them? How's it going? Well, keep at it. Okay. There is a new version of that where he actually has cloned himself and he has many Tim and Mobies in his mic under his microscope. Okay, so in terms of where they're found, the thing in red you can put into your notes, they're found anywhere that you can think of. So there's a big long list. So salt water, fresh water, soil, dust, air, plants, animals, temperatures of a hundred degrees, so in um Deep sea water vents or in volcanoes, you can find them. High salt concentrations, sewage, swamps, human intestines in your stomach at pH 2, in sulfur springs, um, so thermal pools that you get in Yellowstone, parts of Iceland, New Zealand, extreme pressure, so the bottom of the ocean, the deep sea vents, mountain tops, where there would be very low pressure. So anywhere you can think of, you can find bacteria. Obviously, if you can find them to know you have them, you have to be able to grow them. So that's that's where the fun part comes in terms of identifying them. So you can find them anywhere you can think of. And in terms of how they then classify bacteria, they do it on the basis of their shape. So this is some that you find in um, pond water. This is what they look like on in on the surface of an apple, if you can see it. And if you notice here, these guys, they are very spherical, whereas these guys back here are kind of like rods. So they classify bacteria on the basis of their shape. And there's three shapes that we have. So the first one is spherical. So if you want to put that down into your left hand column and I've put in the, the kind of Latin word. So the, the shape is spherical. But if you have streptococcus, if you have a strep throat, you have a streptococcal infection. So that's where they're coming from. You have rod shaped and they normally have the names bacillus. So there's bacillus anthrax, which you really wouldn't want to get or something like lactobacillus that they use to make yogurt in. And then you have spiral. And while their spirillium can be in the name, it's not always the, the case. So there are three shapes. And we'll just go into a little bit more detail on them. I think, I think the, the name and the shape will come up when we start going through them so you'll be able to catch up. So as we said, spherical does what it says in the tin. It's round rod is more like kind of a cylinder type thing and spiral is literally spiral so in terms of our spherical ones 
they will, in terms of their arrangement, they'll be in pairs, they'll be in chains, or they'll be in, cl in clusters. So underneath where you're going to write the pairs, chains, and clusters, you just draw for yourself your pairs, your little chain, or your cluster. Um, your examples are something like Staphylococcus aureus. So this is the most common um, or yeah you have staff on your hands um, this version some of it can cause pneumonia but different staff will do different things so obviously streptococcus will give you throat infections um, the, rea the, the real important thing that you need here in this is what are the shapes we will later on have examples of good bacteria and bad bacteria so maybe Staphylococcus aureus stays with you for that one. Okay, so loads and loads of spheres. Do we need to know the Latin name? Do we need to no? No. So spherical rod and spiral will do it. Having the Latin name may just help you if you're trying to think of a good bacteria, bad bacteria. So like streptococcus, bad bacteria because it's going to give you throat infections. Lactobacillus, good bacteria because it's used in yogurt manufacture. Okay, so after that we go on to our rod. So the rods will be different shapes. So for your little diagram, you have your TV, you have ones that have little spores inside, and similar here. So bacillus anthrax is, affects your um, respiratory system. So in the US you have all these people that send postage with little anthrax particles in there. Um, e. coli is lives in our gut um, but if you don't cook meat properly you can get food poisoning from burgers if they're not cooked properly and that's a version of E. coli that is in there. So depending on where it is and what it does E. coli can be both good and bad. So you don't need the Shishara E. coli, you just need, you can have E. coli. Bring this, what do we put in for arrangement? For the arrangement is, is essentially it, they're all going to be rods in terms of their arrangement. So, and they're the kind of three versions of it. So this would be a spore in this rod and this is a spore in this rod. Thank you. You're welcome. So again, it is the shape we are more interested in than anything else in this instance. Okay, so our last one then are the, sp the spiral is the shape. And they literally look like that in terms of their arrangement so again for some of them they will have little spores in them I know this kind of looks a little bit like um, a sperm but it's not so syphilis is a spiral bacteria um, you can get it from unsafe sex and it eventually resides in your brain um, and makes you a little bit less inhibited about things which means you can pass the syphilis on 
even more. Sharing is caring. There have been huge issues with um, older people in residential homes having syphilis because they think they can't get pregnant so they have lots of unprotected sex. Okay. Miss, in an exam, you don't need to give the Latin name, you just need no. to say, like, oh, it causes syphilis. It's, it's, well, so you will need to, if they ask you, like, what are the shapes or how do you classify bacteria, they're either going to be spherical, rod, or spiral. And then they can ask you good bacteria and bad bacteria, which we will do later <laughs> again. But you could use as a bad bacteria, if you so wanted, causes syphilis. Okay, so just in terms of bacterial size, you will never have to tell them this. This is just for you. They are absolutely teeny tiny. So this is just the tip of a pen. And this is increasing your magnification. So you can there you can fit lots of bacteria in a really, really small space is the moral of the story for this. So in terms of our structure, I'm going to go out and come back in. We're going to do some diagram drawing on the top of page two, three, four. So we are going to. So first thing you're going to do is in your head, we're going to divide our page in half. So if you want to just put a little ticks down it, because what we're going to do, we're going to draw in terms of there are things in a bacterial structure that are always present and there versus things that are only sometimes present. Okay, so. So this side is going to be the always present part. And this side is going to be the sometimes present part. Okay, so usually when we draw little dots in our cells, what's that supposed to be about? What could it be? Any takers? Ribosomes. Yay! Thank you, Rebecca. Okay, so these are our ribosomes. Bacteria actually come with a cell wall and they come with a cell membrane. So they will always be present. We're going to make our little dots bigger up here. Okay, so these are going to be our storage granules. So they will obviously be big dots over here also. And I'm going to take them out, I'm going to take them out. Okay. What else are we going to draw? And, uh, so, because bacteria are prokaryotic, they do not have a membrane bound nucleus, so they will have a DNA chromosome that is free to move around on the inside. Oh, why do we do that? Background color. I don't want that. Undo. Is that undo? Ah, lads. Okay, I'm going to make my background green. Yay. Okay, apologies. So you're going to have your DNA chromosome and you will obviously have cytoplasm. So that's always, always, always going to be present. In terms of the things that are sometimes present, some bacteria will have this kind of, it's called a capsule but it's essentially a layer of slime that is on their outside and that's going to protect them. So this is a capsule or a slime layer.
they will have because they have no mitochondria and this is the reason why biologists think that once upon a time mitochondria were actually bacteria they have a, a whole load of infoldings that are on the the at the edges of the wall and these are called is called a mesosome m e s o s o m e there will also be for some bacteria and I can't draw it out the back very far but you can draw it longer they they will have the equivalent of a tail so this is going to go off my screen this is called a flagellum so it's just a posh name for a tail and the other thing that some bacteria have and we use this in genetic engineering big time and again this is the evidence that possibly mitochondria were once, were once bacteria is they will have a DNA plasmid so these the, the things in blue are the things that are sometimes present. A mesosome, a flagellum, a capsule, and a DNA plasmid. So some bacteria have two sources of genetic material. Okay, so if you sit back when you're done, then I'll know that everyone is done. Okay, so I think we're waiting at two. Okay, so just then to confirm our just parts. So there's only a few things that are new so the function of your cell wall is shape and structure and just to tell you that it's has it's made of complex sugar and protein so think of plants they're made of cellulose and yesterday we learned that fungi have chitin in their cell walls so different type of storage mechanism your cell membrane, there's two words you can use to describe cell membranes. Anyone want to share? Semi-permeable. Thank you so much, Tara. Okay, so they're semi-permeable. They leave some things in and other things out. The cytoplasm then is just going to hold your ribosomes and your storage granules. And I suppose the most important part of your cytoplasm is there are no organelles in there. So no mitochondria or chloroplasts. The little star... I don't know, do you have, I don't think you have any of these. So the little asterisk is the sometimes present. So the mesosome are just these infoldings for respiration. And their role, they also play a role in cell division. But this would probably be the most important one. 
in my memory, misosome has never been asked in terms of what it does or what its function is. So just maybe something to be aware of. Storage granules do what they say on the tin. They will hold food and waste. Ribosomes, what's their job? We did that when we did our cell structure chapter. Who would like to share? They make protein? They make protein. Thank you, Cam. So protein synthesis is their job. So the nuclear material in this is just a DNA chromosome. There's no protein involved. When we look at animal chromosomes, it is a mix of DNA and protein. But bacteria just have the chromosome of DNA. The plasmid is another thing that is sometimes present. Um, we've seen it when we did our structure of um, chloroplasts and structure of... So when we do the little teeth thing, we always put in the little circle of plasmid. That's a terrible diagram. When we do chloroplasts, we do our stacks. We always put in the little circle as well in there. So it is a circular piece of DNA. It contains a few genes, and these are going to be important when we do talk about bacterial resistance. And when we do genetic engineering, you'll see how the plasmids are used. So that's a sometimes present. Not all bacteria have them. A capsule is on the outside and it is a protective mechanism. And a flagellum is just a posh word for the tail and its job is going to be movement. <laughs>